Okay. Hi everyone, if we just wait a couple of minutes for people to come on. Um, okay. Okay, we'll just give it a couple of more minutes for more people to sign on and then I will get started. Okay, perfect. Great. So I will get started. So thank you everyone for attending today. In this session, we will be talking about student life across all BSCP campuses. So just a quick run through on the agenda today. So before we get started, we'll, we've got quite a few people in this call. So we'll do some quick introductions. And then I will pass it over to my colleague, Len, who will talk about student life and societies. Now, I, at this point, I will do a Q&A because Selene can't stay for the whole session. Session. So if any of you guys have questions for Student Life or Societies for ESCP, and in particular the London campus, please have your questions ready um, so we can do a quick Q&A with Selene. And then after that, myself and my colleague Paola will talk about budget and accommodation in London and Paris. And then I will hand it over to our London visa officer, who will talk a little bit about um, the MIM program and, uh, and the different visas involved, because as you imagine, we are um, London's just a little bit complicated to come to, so Vishal will be here to answer your questions, and then we will have a Q&A at the end. So, just moving on to some introductions, so I will be hosting the session today, my name is Poonam, and I am the recruiter for the MIM programme and the MBA in International Management at the London campus. So, Selene, would you like to introduce yourself to the participants in this call? Hi, Selene. Yeah, sorry. Hi. Yeah, I couldn't unmute myself. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm Selene, the student experience and events manager at ESCP uh, London Campus. So, basically, I'm here to assist the smooth running of the organization's students and to enhance the student life and just make them happy. Just, just make the, everyone's time at ESCP fun, right? <laughs> exactly. Like creating memories and yeah. All this kind of thing. Great, exactly. And thank you so much for that, Selene. Uh, Vishal, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Vishal. Um, it's exactly Vishal Preet Kaur. Uh, I'm a visa officer at London campus. Uh, you can definitely contact me for any queries regarding immigration or the policies of home office or anything regarding cast letter or anything. So I'm always available around. Um, that's it from my end. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Vishav. And last but not least, Paula, would you like to introduce yourself to people? Yes, thank you, Poonam. Hi, I am Paula Magna. I'm the head of student services from the Paris campus. Um, under my perimeter, I have the, the student affairs and the health center. So basically, we are here to help you and to guide you through all the administrative things, in fact, as soon as you arrive to Paris. So it means that we will be able to help with accommodation, give you information and guidance about the visa, um, the bank partnerships, for example, give you some information about the scholarship. Perfect, great, thank you, Paola. So moving on, I will hand it over to Selene, who will talk a little bit about the student societies, and then we'll stop for a quick Q&A after this. So over to you, Selene. Thank you, Pura. So, um, at ESCP Business School, we've got uh, more than 50 societies, differentiating from um, like social activities, business, entrepreneurship, or uh, common interests. So we can have like the chess society. We have a huge focus on the sustainability one as well. We've got a couple of musical one and dance, and also something very important for us, which is a campaigning like UNICEF. Most of them are at least present uh, in two or three campuses. If it's not, usually uh, we allow uh, students to create their societies or to take over, to have a bit of uh, transparency between all our campuses and synergy. So um, in September 2021, when we reopened our campus, um, we moved back to a more familiar routine because for a year we had every uh, little events online and activities. So it was quite challenging, but also it was really good because we could just bring people from all around the world 
around our activities. So we had fantastic seminars with awesome uh, guest speakers who could have never made it to our European campus, if it was not the case. Now we are just approaching it with a hybrid kind of um, approach. So obviously the sports and everything will be done uh, outside. But we still hold a lot of webinars where we invite all our campuses and our alumni uh, to be part of it. So we didn't come back to uh, on campus only. We just adapted, which I think is quite awesome. <laughs> then uh, um, one part that is very, very close to our hearts in SCP is the yoga and mindfulness. So again, uh, I think the pandemic just increased this for us, uh, that we need to make sure that our students are good inside and out. So we promote a lot of this in all our campuses where we can organize like workshop sessions of how to breathe, how to deal with anxiety and all these kind of things. And um, uh, yeah, in terms of sports, sorry. So we've got like multi-campuses uh, societies which will organize um, like the regatta, for example. It's a four days event uh, organized in uh, Italy. We've got the ski event. Another one in Italy as well, but there is one in France and um, there is a Star Trek as well around. So it depends on the campuses. If you want to travel, each ESCP student will always be able to participate. It's never close to one campus. It's just first come first served. So um, can you, uh, next slide please. Yeah, in terms of our events and student life, uh, very busy. So, uh, from September, when you will arrive as a MIM student, you will have uh, the uh, opportunity to go to the finance banking track, which is basically a week where you get to know all the prestigious uh, top banks in London. And also, again, uh, last year, we just organized it online uh, and it still worked. So it's possible to do that, uh, even if the restrictions uh, come tougher. Then after we love a bit of competition uh, between the other business school and us. So in Paris, uh, Turin and London, we will compete about the top against the top business school to see like who has the best football teams, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You will get to just really enjoy this sports dynamic and this sense of belonging, which I found quite good. Uh, after in terms of uh, societies. I personally, in London, organized two of them. Um, maybe in Paris, I think it's also the same, one or two a year. In Turin, I mean, it's a bit the same, where you get to know all our societies. And so due to the uh, restriction, again, for now, we're just uh, hosting online, but it's very, very um, entertaining. And you get to speak to the students, uh, open heart. <laughs> there is no one to, like, you can ask whatever questions you want, and it will be answered. You can join as many society as you want, but just try to find a balance between your academic life and your social life and the society's life, because it can be a lot when you have exams uh, in addition to the society's engagement. Uh, also, our flagship events, we've got an inter-campus uh, uh, entrepreneurship festival which uh, all our campuses choose the same date to organize this. And our students get to present uh, like MVP demos. And it's a kind of a simulation trading fair, which is for those who are uh, familiar with it, um, is a bit like the Shark Tank or apprentice, Apprenticeship uh, BBC's um, program where you get to vote and there is winners, etc., etc. Uh, all along the um, year, I think we've got um, around 200 events for students. So going from webinar, conferences, uh, social events, Halloween, uh, gala, name it, we've got it. So we are <laughs> everywhere and it's very, very, very active. So I will take your questions now. Thank you, Solen. So uh, yeah, I think if we give it a couple of minutes, um, if anyone wants to send in their questions, so please use the Q&A or the chat functions if you want to speak to Solen or ask Solen about societies or even, you know, Solen, I think it would be good for you to mention if there's not a society that ESCP have, what's the process for students to maybe create a society or put a proposal forward for societies? So each campus has their own process. 
But yeah. mainly it, it goes to one thing, you need to fill in a form with uh, at least uh, three board members, president, treasurer, secretary. Yeah. You need to have a clear mission. Uh, you need to show that there is interest for it. Because if you want to create a, something which is not going to bring any students, it's most likely to be declined. Uh, I personally never really declined any society, except if it's clashing with another one. But for me, all ideas are well on board. And then after it's approved by the board, uh, you are on board. <laughs> as easy as that. Great, perfect. Thank you so much for that. Um, so then I don't think there's any questions for Student Society. So I know you need to leave. So thank you so much for your time today. It's really much appreciated. And if anyone does have any questions for Selene, please reach out to me in the booth and I'm more than happy to give you, um, you know, partial questions on to Selene so she can answer them. Um, yeah. in a little bit more. Yes, yes, exactly that. So thank you so much, Selene. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend and we appreciate you um, attending today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Salem. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, so just moving on, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about budgeting and accommodation. So, oh, sorry, apologies. Um, so over to you, Paula. Yes, thank you very much. So, I'm going to give you some general information about the accommodation and visa services uh, in Paris specifically. Um, in fact, as soon as you are um, confirmed as a student of ours, normally you will receive an email, an automatic email um, containing the welcome pack. In fact, it, it is a website um, that is um, where you can find that all the uh, student affairs information from all the campuses. Uh, like this, you have all the information before you arrive uh, to, to each country. So each campus has a student affairs service uh, in order to help you with accommodation, with visa information, etc. So in our case, we use um, an IT tool that is Digital Welcome Desk. And uh, by using this tool, uh, you are able to find all the information that uh, um, it is important and it is according to your profile. Meaning that, uh, for example, a student coming from the United States will not see the same information as a student coming from uh, Germany, for example, because there are the European ones and the non-European ones. So um, basically, um, about accommodation, you will receive, uh, you will have the information about um, how to find um, the information, and the offer is quite large. So you should know that we do not have an ECP residence, but we, we work with a lot of uh, resident partners. So there are a, lo a lot of them um, in Paris and around. We also work with um, like uh, private uh, owners that uh, they, they, they give us in fact information directly. So we share this information by newsletters or, or even in, on our Facebook page. Um, about the visa, um, it, it is the same. In fact, uh, you should have the information. Uh, the visa is more important for the non-European students that come to, to, to France for, for the very first time. So uh, there is someone that will guide you uh, through the process and uh, will give you all the information. Um, in our uh, digital welcome desk, you will find a lot of information, not only about accommodation, but also about your life on the campus, um, information about, about our, our bank partners and also how to finance your studies. So uh, it is very important that before uh, arriving to the country, you um, build your budget. In fact, you have to take into account the tuition fees per year, but also the life the, of everyday life uh, in each city. So um, pay attention to this because it, it's very important and, it, and you should be able, in fact, to enjoy your student life uh, as a student at the ECT, but also enjoy the amazing life that we, we have in each city in Europe. Can you please change the slide? Thank you. So uh, just to give you some, uh, some faces here. Uh, you can, uh, we'll, uh, of course, the, the people from the team will be there to give you some um, uh, support, in fact, as soon as you arrive to the, to the, the Paris campus. And of course, we will be in touch as soon as you get admitted. That's all Perfect. for me. 
Perfect, great. Thank you so much, Paola. So moving on, um, I, I will just go over a little bit about accommodation in London. So as my colleague Paola said, we don't have any affiliations with accommodation services, but we do have the right resources to support you in finding accommodation in said location. So we do have an internal housing platform, um, but we also have ESCP students rents. So this is a group for when you are admitted onto the programme um, where enrolled students essentially um, advertise accommodation but they also you know it's a great place for you to meet your peers and 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 you know join up together to um, find houses or flats in London to stay now these are some useful websites um, that we recommend to all students if they want to come to the UK and come and stay uh, but one thing we I we will say is do not pay any deposits or anything like that until you have seen the accommodation. And really, um, if you are traveling to any ESCP campus, we, we recommend you start looking for your accommodation at least six weeks before you are due to arrive in the country. Um, in addition to this, each campus also hosts um, an accommodation, budgeting and visa session just before students arrive. So if you are going to the Berlin campus, for example, or you're going to the Madrid campus, please look out for those sessions that are being hosted by the recruiters and the student support services teams. So moving on to budget. So how much do you need to actually stay in, in, in one of our European locations? Now, these are kind of rough, rough estimates we have put together, but please note, this is all dependent on your lifestyle, your preferences, you know, so they are general estimates um, and we use them as a referencing portal, but you know, these prices can be lower or higher, um, but it really just depends on your lifestyle. So, Paula, do you have anything to add maybe to, um, you know, these numbers that are on, on, on the MIM website? Oh, we can't hear you. You're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, in fact, um, this is an estimation, um, as you said. Um, the, the prices can vary, in fact, um, regarding where you are because yeah. in Paris for example life is a little bit expensive but around Paris is less expensive so minimum yeah. I, we can say it's uh, 850 50 euros and it could go until 1000 1200 um, yeah. so it, it really depends so the better if you find something close to campus for example um, and that is not in Paris um, yeah, you are able to find something less expensive. Yeah, and that's and the same goes for London, really, because you look at the figures for London and Paris and they look quite expensive. But, you know, and, we, and Vishav will talk a little bit about the money side of things as well. But really, you know, you could do things on the cheap. So it really just depends on how you decide to spend your time um, in, in the nominated countries. So moving on, we are going to talk about the anticipated visas. So I'm sure you're all excited to hear from Vishav about what you need to um, do if you want to come study your MIM in the UK. So over to you, Vishav. Hello, everybody. Um, again, my name is Vishav. Um, so I'm a visa officer at London campus. We are a team of two visa officers. Uh, one is Mr. Lodi. He's Lodi Norega. He's a visa officer again, and it's myself. You can reach us on our respective emails. His email ID is lnorega at escp.eu, and mine is vcor at escp. Whereas you can reach us, both of us, on our general email ID as well, which is visa support London uh, at escp.eu. Now, coming ahead, for what reasons you can come to us, uh, which I already said before, but I'm just going to repeat once more. You can come to us for cast letter. So students who are applying for a student visa, which is a long-term visa, would know what is a CAS letter, or I am going to explain in my next slide what exactly is a CAS letter. A uh, visa letter, it is for the students who are coming for just six months. Um, then any home office queries or policy changes, such as graduate immigration route, or you can talk about exceptional assurances. Um, there are many policies. You can definitely come to us for those reasons. Uh, application process, when are you when you're putting up your application for home office, so there are different uh, categories you need to add some things into when some people students do come to us that what we need to put into this column or something we are definitely available for all of this and your visa queries such as extensions deadlines switching visas 
So right now it's very much common to ask queries about switching your visa to a graduate immigration route. So yes, so out of that. So moving to the next slide, uh, what exactly, what visa you need and um, uh, what visa category to apply for. So the students who are coming for just one semester or for six months of studies, or less than six months should apply for a standard visitor visa. Uh, this visa is not required. EU students do not need to apply for this visa. You can just freely come as you were doing before to UK, uh, show your passport and uh, you can just come through the EU gates, uh, sorry. Uh, or, or you can just uh, see the border officer. You can just come directly. You do not need to apply for any visa beforehand. Whereas some of the low risk nationalities such as US Ameri uh, Americans, Canadians, some of the South Americans even do not need to get a visa arrive, a visa uh, beforehand and they can just travel just like that. But some of the international students such as Chinese, uh, then coming ahead with Indians, which is very popular between these two, they do need to apply for six month visa before coming to the UK. Now coming ahead, what do you need to know before applying for a student visa, uh, standard visitor visa. The very first thing is you cannot get your visa extended. This is very much common because one of my students, she just contacted me that she still got a visa. So somehow she has a long-term visa, but she cannot stay for more than six months. She was asking me that whether she can stay back or not, or can she get her visa done from for any other country, like a Shenigan country, EU countries from inside the UK? So you cannot do, you cannot apply, get your visa extended in a uh, standard visitor visa. You cannot apply for any other country's visa from inside the UK. You will not be allowed to work while on a student, a standard visitor visa, and you cannot do any internships for your program in the UK being on a standard visitor visa. It's purely studies. Moving ahead, uh, students who need a student visa is for the students who are coming to UK for two consecutive semesters or who would like to do an internship following two consecutive semesters. Please, uh, again, I'm, I'm saying that no, it's not like one semester and one internship. It's only two semesters, which is must. So two semesters and internship following these semesters, you then you need to apply for a student visa. Now coming ahead. Being on a student visa, what pros and cons you will have? You will have, you can get your visa extended, which I said that if you are completing your studies in the UK, like in MIM program, if you are completing your studies, you can get your visa extended for graduate immigration route if you are eligible for it. So we will talk that whether you are eligible or it or not, I'm not sure if we are going to talk on this session or not, but I'm happy to talk to you uh, on this if you would like to give me a different call or an email, we can arrange a call. We are, I'm happy to talk on that. Then you will be allowed to work for 20 hours in your week time. This is in term time, whereas being on a holiday, like a December break or somewhere around a summer, summer break, you are allowed to work 40 hours, which is full time. You can do an internship if you are sponsored. Now, if you're sponsored means if it is mentioned on your cast letter that you are allowed to do an internship, then you can definitely look for an internship. You can apply for any other country's visas from UK itself. Now, this is mainly for Chinese students and UK students, which I've seen that they would like to travel to uh, Europe for some of our career fairs, which happens in Paris campus. So they can definitely apply on a, for that visa from UK itself. And um, then CAS, the, main, the, the first question comes when we can start the process. So CAS can be, uh, can uh, request, CAS request can be started 180 days prior to the course commencement date. That is uh, six months prior to your course uh, start date. And the processing time for the CAS letter is three to five working days. Only if you have your complete set of documentations and everything, everything is fine with the documentations, we are happy to show your CAS within three days. And coming to visa letter, which I almost forgot, the visa letter can be issued with a one day or two days time. And now coming ahead that what so, uh, supporting documentations we would need for the visa application for your standard visitor visa and your student visa. Uh, for standard visitor visa, you would need a passport valid for the duration of your stay with one blank page so that visa officers can put a visa vignet on your uh, passport the visa letter, which is issued by the ESCP. Now visa letter has your details in it, your passport details in it, our details in it, which means that we will have our license number in it. We will, and then your fees detail in it, that how much fees you have paid. And we, obviously we will have our signatures on it so that it authorizes that we have, ESCP has issued that letter. You would need to 
uh, add your scholarship certificate if you have been awarded with any, uh, your transcripts, your completion certificates, your financials. Now coming ahead that how much money you need to show. So for UK, you need to show, for, especially for London, because it is the inside London, the campus is inside London. So you need to show one, three, three, four uh, per month. So you, if you are coming for standard visitor visa, you need to multiply that with six. So that will come around seven eight to 8,000 pounds. So that is the amount you need to show, plus your fees for the entire year, which is which is generally these officers request for reason being they want to be sure that whether you will be moving to any other country or not after complete, completion of your studies. So that's one thing, your birth certificate, if you are getting sponsored by your parents for the financials, your birth certificate, your parents' passports as well, your private health insurance, which we urge you to take so that if you have any medical emergency in the UK, you can use that. And the application for fees for the standard visitor visa is pounds 95. So that's all about standard visitor visa. If you have more questions, again, we are happy to talk about it. Moving ahead with the student visa now. Um, so again, your passport valid for the duration of your stay with one blank page, your CAS letter. In, in standard visitor visa, we had visa letter. And now in this one, we has a CAS, which is a confirmation of acceptance of the studies. Now this letter is issued or we get generated by the government portal. So we generated by that and it has a very unique number, which is just done for one application, which will be yours. So you need to put that uh, unique number in the application form while you will be, which you will be submitting to the UK VI and all the details, what we have filled in that CAS form will, will be there with the visa officer or your case worker who will be giving you your visa decisions. So that's basically a CAS letter. Then your proof of qualifications, your transcripts, your completion certificates, plus the documentation, which we have mentioned on the CAS letters. That's the important one. Your English proficiency certificate, which is IELTS, TOEFL, which whichsoever is accepted by the ESCP for your program. We can talk about it. Uh, your TB certificate, it is for some of the countries. We have mentioned the link here. Please just see that if you would need this TB test. So it's basically for Chinese, and Indian students, they definitely need one, but please check for your country. So EU students, they do not need this. Uh, the, the proof of financials. So you need to show 12006 if you are applying for a student visa. Now coming ahead that you, it doesn't matter that you're applying for uh, one year or one and a half year. So they have just calculated it with nine, one, three, th one, three, three, four, multiply by nine. So it straight away comes with 12006. This is your living funds. You need to show that. It should be 28 days old in your bank, but not more than 31 days. Now this is a bit complicated. It says if you're showing a bank statement after 28 days, just make one one a withdrawn uh, withdraw a transaction and it will be enough funds, which will be 28 days, but not more than 31. Uh, then your sponsorship certificate or birth certificate if you have if you are getting sponsored by your parents, your consent letter from your parents that uh, they are sponsoring you, you for your studies uh, and if you're below 18 years old and any other documentations which is individual uh, which is uh, which you have added as per your individual circumstances. Now coming to this again I'm saying because I think there will be some of the EU students as well. So EU students they do not need to show financials. They are low risk nationalities, even US, they do not need to show financials. Canadians, they do not need to show financials. EU students do not need to show financials. Coming ahead, even Chinese have fallen in a, into a category of um, low risk nationals. Even Chinese do not need to show financials now. So just straight away documentations and we can issue you a CAS, put up your application and get your visa decision. We'll be happy to see you at London campus. Thank you. And yeah, sorry. yeah, just sorry, sorry, oh. just just one more yeah. thing. And if you have any, if you want to have a brief information on a student visa or a standard visitor visa, we have our guides on our website. You can please, you can check that on ESCP's page. Whereas even you can go on uh, the UK Gov site as well. You will get, you can get a guidance from there. You'll have a brief information. And yes, the rest we are here. We can definitely help you. Out. Thank you.
Great, perfect. Thank you so much, Vishav. So we will, so thank you everyone for your time. We're just going to take some questions. So uh, one of the questions is regarding tuition fees. So do we have to pay for them per campus? For example, if we are in ESCP Paris, but what, would like to spend a semester in London, do we only pay the tuition fees for Paris or do we pay different fees? So I know Paola, you said you would like to answer this slide? Yes, yes, I would like to answer to this one. Um, thank you. In fact, the tuition fee service is based on the Paris campus, so um, you will pay to Paris. In fact, as soon as you are enrolled as a student, you will receive normally your, your financial file where you will have all the information about the payment of your tuition fees and the payment will be done uh, each year and you will receive your invoice wherever you are. Um, in fact, the most important thing is that to, to be updated uh, where you live, and, um, and to indicate the, the address of the person who is paying your tuition fees. It could be you, yourself, or it could be your parent uh, or, or whoever. <laughs> Great, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Paola. So, Visha, I have a question for you about um, a, a, the, a, the visa situation. So, um, I've got a question here to say that there is an Italian student, um, but they've moved to the UK to the, do their degree. Should they apply to, the Lon to London to keep their pre-settled status during M1, or would they need a visa to go to London for their M2? Uh, so if you have or if you do already hold a pre-settlement status, then you do not need a visa. So if you are planning to apply for a pre-settlement status now, so in that case, I think the dates have been closed. So which means that all the EU students have come into this, this category. So you have to apply if you're planning to stay for another one year, exactly one year, which is longer than six months. So you need to apply for a student visa. But if you're planning to come for one semester only, so you do not need that. You do not need to apply for any visa for that then. Perfect, great. And we've got one question here about uh, specifics for students from Hong Kong. So do you know anything about the short term or, or the one year visa, if you can give some information about that? Yes, so for Hong Kong, I think if your questions are, is, is your question, because I'm I'm not able to get it because there are two categories with Hong Kong students, like some of them, they are eligible to get uh, citizenship in the British, in the British uh, countries like UK. So, but that's for some certain years if you're born in that year then only you get that but if your question is around that then I don't know the answer because it totally depends upon your profile but whereas if your answer is if your question is about the student visa or the standard visitor visa then it remains the same so you have to you you can definitely send me your profile I'm happy to answer you your questions accordingly because coming to just with Hong Kong I'm I, I it's it's much more vague it's not quite clear I'm sorry about it Perfect, great. So um, I don't think there's any more questions regard. Oh, we've. Oh no, yeah, I don't think we have any more questions. Um, if you do have any other questions regarding the recruitment, please reach out to me on the booth. Um, so I know I've got a question here about the Dream Mount. So please reach out to me on the booth or do private message me. And I'm more than happy to have a one to one with students to talk more about the main recruitment process. So thank you, Visha. Thank you, Paola, for today's session, and thank you all for attending today. And if you do want to speak to any one of us please message us on our email or in the booths and we will be more than happy to help. So thank you so much. And thank you guys. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank, you. Bye. thank you guys. Bye. Bye.